Hey everybody, it's Casey here at Sea Run Fly and Tackle. Today I'm going to show you how to tie a balanced leech utilizing the Pro Tire Tungsten Head Turner Beads. Okay, so to tie this pattern, I've taken an RX FW555 uh, mini jig hook in a size 14, and to that I've added a Pro Tire Tungsten Head Turner Bead. Uh, in this instance, it's going to be a 764ths in uh, this kind of matte olive color. Um, we have these at the shop here, uh, 12 different colors. Definitely worth checking out. So when you fast or when you slide this bead onto the hook, um, it's kind of hard to see in the video here, but there is a dished sort of concave um, indentation in the front of this bead, and we want to have that butted up against the eye of the hook. Reason being, um, if it's on that way, that tungsten is able to extend past the eye of the hook. And the beauty with these things is, is we can do a balanced pattern. Uh, without having to do uh, like a pin and bead setup that you'd see on a lot of other um, balance flies. So something that's new here for us and uh, very effective for tying flies and definitely worth checking out. Um, so from here, I'm going to take some uni thread in olive in an dot size, um, match your thread color to um, the color of the pattern that you're tying. But uh, yeah, I, I just prefer eight aught personally, but uh, six works just fine. Attach my tying thread here. Trim off that tag end. And we'll just lay down a quick thread base. You'll see that bead flop around a little bit. It's totally fine. Um, very easy to fasten in place here in just a second. So for a tail on this pattern, uh, I want something that's going to have a lot of movement in the water, so I'm going to take some Nature Spirit Fish Hunter Marabou, uh, medium olive for this particular fly. Uh, by all means, tie it in whatever colors you like. Um, so if you're tying leeches, you know, brown, black, uh, kind of a maroon or a claret, um, and various shades of green are all very popular, as well as, you know, mixed um, patterns. You can have like a kind of a variegated look to them if you mix your colors. So I'm not going to tie a very big tail, or a very bushy tail, sorry. I'm going to take like maybe 8 or 10 strands of that marabou just off the side of one of the plumes. And I'm just going to fix that in for a skinny little tail. And I want the length to be about the length of the shank of the hook. Give or take. Doesn't have to be exact. The beauty of a fly like this in this color um, will also imitate um, a damselfly as well too. Trim off the butts here. Now just to add a little bit of flash, I'm going to take some hairline crystal flash in uh, ultraviolet. Don't need much, I'm just going to take a single strand and I'm just going to double it over. Just to add a little bit of accent. Manipulate it a little bit just so that it lays the way that I want it to. That'll work. And we'll just trim it off in and amongst the tips of those marabou there. I don't worry about the marabou tips lining up perfectly. It just adds a little bit more taper to the pattern. So from here, I'll just bring my thread all the way back. I'm going to make a quick dubbing loop. dubbing loop hook and inside that loop we're going to take some Arizona diamond dub in uh, light olive and we're just going to evenly distribute this dubbing into our loop so that we don't have any big clumps in there small fly, it doesn't take a lot of dubbing, and it doesn't need to be super bulky. We want kind of a slim profile on this fly. So now that I've got that dubbing the way that I like it, I'll just give this a quick spin. Now 
and then I take a pair of hackle pliers and I just transfer my loop over to that because I find it's a little bit easier to manage and I'm just going to palmer the body. This is where a lot of people say, oh, well, I'm going to use a rotary vise. Um, they work great. I know lots of people use them. I just never got the hang of that. And uh, for me, I just, yeah, this just works. So if it ain't broke, you know. Stroke those fibers back a little bit just so that everything's pointing the right way. Just align that bead so it sits the way that I want, and we'll butt that dubbing loop right up tight to it with a couple extra turns right at the head there, just to add a little bit of bulk at the front of the fly, but not too much. And you can experiment at time however you like. I prefer this pattern to be on the slimmer, kind of skinnier side. tie that off so that that dubbing loop is fixed firmly in place so things don't unwrap on us. Trim off that tag. Just a quick extra couple of wraps there just to secure everything. A quick whip finish. Oops. Usually do two. Apply your favorite cement. And then we'll give that a quick brush just to pick things out and help things make look buggy and flow evenly in the water. There's any little bits that are too long, you can trim them up now. Not that the fish is going to care that there's one strand, but hey. And there you have it, a very, very effective little balance pattern. Um, something you definitely want to add to your box for the spring. Um, fish as well throughout the summer as well too, into the fall. Just a good overall pattern to have in the box. Lots of colors, vary your sizes, and uh, I think you're going to have a lot of success trying this fly out. So a fly like this, I'll hang under an indicator a lot of times um, on a loop knot. Now you can see right now it's not sitting totally horizontal in the water. Don't worry about it, I'll show you in a second. Um, if you are more comfortable tying a clinch knot, by all means tie a clinch knot. You can fix it tight to the eye of the hook and out of the water it will 100% sit perfectly horizontal. Um, it just doesn't move quite as well in the water as it does in that with that loop. Um, and also, you're not limited to fishing a pattern like this just under an indicator. Um, very successful uh, casting a, a pattern like this and stripping it as well um, on these little jig hooks, with uh, especially with that weight up at the front there or, or up past the eye. They really pitch in the water and uh, give them some really, really cool action. So what I'll typically do... get this fly wet first so I can so now you can see this pattern's wet and it's hanging even weirder and you're thinking okay Casey like what what are you talking about well here you go when this thing's in the water it's sitting horizontal I've got this hang like it's just hanging underneath a strike indicator and that's exactly what we want and you can see how easily that fly moves and dances around there with just the slightest bit of movement from me. Imagine that, it's a little bit of wave action um, on your strike indicator, just enticing those fish to come grab that fly. So again, I think a pattern, or this is a pattern that you guys are gonna like a lot, um, particularly in this color combination, like I was saying, make a great little damsel Im imitation too. But yeah, hope you really, really like this pattern. Um, I think you're gonna have a lot of success with it. 
give it a try. So you can find all the materials for this fly listed below. Um, if you're not familiar with how to tie that non-slip loop knot, we also have it on our YouTube channel. Uh, if you like this fly, like these videos, uh, feel free to like our uh, channel here, like the video, hit that subscribe button so you can see what's going on here at the store. And yeah, come on by anytime. Uh, feel free to come by talk about flies or whatever, and uh, more than happy to give you a hand. Hope you like this video. Thanks for watching.